Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today we're going to be taking a look at Bloodborne. Thanks to some very talented people in the Bloodborne community lately, we've had a glimpse at a lot of content that was removed from the game prior to release. And today I'm going to be showing you some of that content restored back into the game and to varying degrees actually playable. I just wanted to start by giving a huge thank you to SanitSK for pointing me in the right direction for which files to modify and providing me information about where to find deleted content. Definitely check out his channel if you'd like a far more thorough analysis of Bloodborne's deleted content, such as unused dialogue and early revisions of the game's storyline that didn't make the final cut. I'd also like to thank Azuli the Witch for helping push me in the right direction with all of this. Their fantastic Twitter account is also linked in the comments. With that said, let's begin. Now let me clear this up first. I have no idea where in the game these characters or enemies are actually meant to appear. I've just inserted them into a few random locations to see how they looked or behave in various environments. But for all we know, these creatures were never meant to appear in any of the locations we actually visit in the game. First up, we have this removed creature referred to in the game's data files as Slug Princess. She's one of the more interesting characters and it's almost definitely left over from some character ideas that were eventually realized in the Fishing Hamlet DLC later on. She wanders around really slowly and has an attack that can't hurt the player. She's also got animations for taking damage and dying as well. It's hard to know whether she was originally intended to be a dialogue NPC or just a background character that would wander around a little. Either way, her blindfold is an interesting touch, subtly tying her to the blindfolded, uh, blindfolded hunters that we also see around Yarnum. She has dedicated animations for turning around to face the player as well, but it doesn't quite work and sometimes she just pivots around on a single point. Still, she was definitely originally meant to slowly wander towards the player and try to attack them. Next up we have these witch creatures that clearly look like the eye collector witches we eventually saw uh, in Hemwick in the final game. Uh, although these look a lot younger and still slightly human, kind of like a transitionary point or a missing link between the women who wander around Hemwick and the witches that they eventually devolve into. Perhaps the Witch of Hemwick boss was, eventually, uh, was originally uh, going to use this unique character model, but in the end they replaced it with a more generic looking enemy. However, early in the old Hunters DLC, we do actually encounter one unremarkable witch enemy that seems really out of place. And I'm guessing that this younger looking witch may also be an unfinished idea from the DLC that was eventually totally written out. This one's pretty unfinished, you can't hurt it, it can't hurt you, and some of its animations don't really blend very well into each other. It has a rapid dash that it'll perform just like the eye collectors in the final game, but it doesn't really work quite right. Here we have another very unfinished character that really reminds me of what ended up being the patients at the research hall in the DLC uh, with the huge sacks of water on their heads. This one looks like a wooden doll though and even though its animations are unfinished I get the impression that they were still meant to be very jerky and robotic. Maybe originally there was going to be some kind of connection between the research hall experiments and the idea of bringing a doll to life, which German uh, ended up doing in the hunter's dream.
Once again, this creature can't hurt the player and also can't be damaged or killed. It does have a few clumsy attacks programmed in though. So here's an enemy referred to in the data files as King of Skeleton, and it's hard to know if it was ever going to be a boss or just a common enemy. It also really looks like it would have been more at home in Dark Souls 3, but it's far more finished than some of the other creatures we've seen that clearly fit perfectly into Bloodborne's aesthetic, so who knows. It's got a lot of attacks, and I believe it also has an optional item it can equip that isn't working correctly. So you can see some polygons jutting out uh, that aren't placed in the world properly. They work really well, although they're missing some code so they get confused and stop fighting from time to time. I also love this death animation where it reaches into the sky before its arm falls to pieces. Okay, so finally I wanted to show you what is almost definitely a deleted boss creature, just based on its size and presentation in my opinion. This enemy is referred to in the data files as Lesser Demon. And once again, it doesn't really look like it belongs in Bloodborne's world. But it's hard to say, really. It mostly works pretty well, and it can put up a fight without messing itself up too easily. It even manages to do some flying moves and dramatic strikes that move around quite a lot without glitching. It does get stuck into a loop from time to time where it looks like it's roaring or trying to breathe fire uh, and nothing I did to it would make it stop so I just had to reload the battle if that happened so it would start fighting again. But overall, it's a fairly well-realized enemy, and apart from maybe not really fitting into the game aesthetic, it's hard to say why it was never included in the end. So I'd just like to say a huge thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts about what these characters mean lore-wise, uh, any other places in the game you'd like me to show these enemies behaving in, or anything else to say, please let me know in the comments. And if you'd like a bit of a behind the scenes look at the process of creating this video, be sure to follow me over on Twitter at ManFightDragon. There's a link in the description. Above all else, be sure to like this video and subscribe, and I'll hopefully upload five more deleted Bloodborne characters as soon as I can, as well as give you a look at some of the level modifications I've been able to do to reveal some unseen parts of the maps. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.